Can you see the screen, sir? Yeah, perfect. Now perfect. Okay. Uh, good morning to all of you. Uh, thank you for registering. And we have uh, almost uh, 1,060 uh, uh, registration today. And we have people now logged in almost 200 plus, and we are starting oh. now. And this is our next uh, Saturday series uh, that is the strategy and evacuation as per the international standard called NFPA. Uh, about me, myself from Blue and Gray, we are a team of uh, very passionate uh, fire and security automation uh, domain, and we have office in Singapore, India, in UAE. So I'll just run fast. Uh, learn everything. Sorry. Learn everything that is good from others, but bring it in and in your own way, absorb it. Change the system for good. Do not become others. This is by Sri Swami Vivekananda. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm a founder of uh, Fire and Security Action of India. I'm a son of a firefighter with 33 years of experience. So my passion started at the age of five. And I love this fire subject. And uh, I just want to take you to the facts of life in India. Uh, you know that we have recorded 68 deaths every day due to fire accidents in various parts of the country. And out of that, 47 female and 21 male die every day in India due to various fire accidents. An average, the fire brigade get 641 fire call per day. And also another statistics that one death every four minutes due to fire accident, sorry, for the road accident. Another sad part is 848 women are harassed, raped, killed every day and four raped per hour. These are the average uh, statistics when it comes to safety and uh, security. And uh, the worldwide death due to unintentional injuries are expected to grow by 56% between 2015 and 2030, from slightly over 3 million to 4.5, almost 5 million people a year. It's estimated more than 90% of death worldwide that results from injuries occurs in low and middle income countries. And this is our India status and happiness report, uh, which came in types of India. So India, which means 80% of Indians are not happy in their life. How do we make them happy? So I always strongly believe safety should begin from home. So if you start implementing the safety plans in your home, and emergency safety kits are torn, then the country will prosper and the country will become a developed country. Change should begin from you, ladies and gentlemen. And I'm sure since you are taking part in this uh, webinar, you are a believer of that. I no doubt and ensure that whatever we learn today, it is practiced in our life every day. Today we have our very important keynote speaker, speaker Mr. V. Suresh, who is very passionate and is a, and a civil engineer from Anna University with over 53 years of professional experience in housing, infrastructure, rural, urban development and built environment sector. He is the current chairman of Indian Green, uh, Indian Green Building Council and is the Vice Chairman of National Building Code. The awards and recognition are over 25 to 30. So I've just mentioned a few of them on the slide. And we have the speaker of the day, the young Santosh S. Warwick, Chief Fire Officer and Fire Advisor to Maharashtra uh, Industrial Development Corporation and also the director of Maharashtra Fire Services. He's a science graduate, an engineer, and a financial MBA graduate, and also the law graduate. You know, unbelievable, very rare you find a fire officer with multiple talent. 
He has 28 years of experience in the field of fire prevention and protection. He has served in various positions in MIDC fire services. One of the architect in drafting India's first Maharashtra Fire Act, an expert in firefighting of various occupancies, implementation of fire prevention, life safety measure as per the National Building Code. He has successfully handled various industrial projects, especially at townships, special townships, SEZs, and ID parks in Maharashtra. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Mr. V. Suresh to give opening remark. Sir, over to you, sir. The uh, audio is fine? Yes, sir. Wonderful. Very happy. Good morning to all your distinguished participants. It's such a pleasure to be there today morning. Uh, before uh, Santosh Warik makes this substantive presentation. In particular, I'm, I came in over there because I've been associated with the building code right from the first version, which came in 1970. We used to work in 1966 on that. And then we had the next version came in 83. Then in 2005, the next version, the latest version is 2016. My association has been there right from the first version till the latest version where I'm now the vice chairman for the National Building Code Committee. And in particular, in the whole National Building Code, if you see, parts two and three are the most important one on administration, development control rule, and general building requirements. That's about backbone of the all building regulations, all cities and towns. Balance 20% will be covering the fire safety in part four, and the structural design coming in part six. So therefore, you are talking about the backbone of the whole building regulation where all the space to be done within a plot or up to the plot, everything will come in a three-dimensional format in respect of not only the development control rules and the general building requirements. I'm sure a detailed presentation will be coming from, uh, is coming from uh, Santosh Warik, uh, most suited person to make this presentation. Normally, they would have talked more on part four, but this is equally important. Unless part three provides that particular space framework, you can't get part four operated upon because the very access to the particular plot, your width of the road to be done, and also the volumetric development of the building in terms of the heights, the area, setbacks, heights, the FAR, FSI, and the density of development, all of them are covered in the part three component and the zonation of the buildings in respect of the various occupancies which are there and all this will come. So to very briefly take a, let me try to see in the next about six to seven minutes, whether I can give a capsule version of all this. Incidentally, this is done by the P1 panel number one for the National Building Code. There are 22 expert panels to deal with the 33 sections of the NBC, but part two and part three is looked after by the panel on administration and the general building requirements of which I am the chairman of this panel. So therefore, contents of these are known uh, without any notes in front of me because we have been dealing with that. Primarily, what it tries to say that in a whole city development process that you come over there, you deal from the macro down to the micro. You got to have a network of your streets and your roads and uh, other places with all the use of occupancies coming for the master plan as well as the various uh, development plans that you have over there. You will have the residential occupancy, you will have the uh, business occupancy, educational occupancy, you have the institutional occupancy of health, you will have the storage occupancy, industrial occupancy. All, all the asset classes of the building are classified, therefore, based on the use and occupancy classification. Very important. And therefore, and that's also linked with the amount of fire severity. Many people did not know this, that it is a, it's not coincidence that right from the first one, which is residential with the least amount of fire load to the highest, which will come in industrial or hazardous or storage occupancy over there from a one hour fire to a four hour fire, in the, depending upon the combustible contents of the building and the nature of occupancy that you have. So all these occupancies are given, which normally in a town planning way or the way architects look at it, they look at it as only a building for residential or a hospital or a hotel or a office complex or an IT park or a 
retail mall, etc., etc. But no, it also has got an underlying component of how much is the fire severity and what can be the fire load in that particular building. Is it a one-hour fire, a two-hour fire, a three-hour fire, or a four-hour fire? Your fire catches up depending upon the contents within the particular building and depending on the nature of occupancy in a large way. And then you get on to, therefore, the types of construction required to deal with that particular fire. If you have a fire of two hours, obviously, you know, you want the wall as well as the column, as well as the slab, which is the structural system, should have at least so much amount of fire resistance rating to deal with that particular one, to contain that, so that the structural integrity of the building is not lost, lesser than the fire load coming in a building on that. So the types of construction are identified, therefore, with resistance rating of for various members, column, beam, slab, floor, wall, etc., etc., doors, etc., will come in detail. You'll hear more on that. Once you've done that particular one, you are to deal with what can be permitted where in fire zones in a city where you're all hazardous storage, you don't want the residents to come over there, obviously. So therefore, your zonations coming, which are town planning zones, which are marked with different colors, they also look into these particular aspects so that you put only those type of things which are very high fire severity thing cannot be put in low fire severity. Zonation also is based on that. You will hear about that. Then you come on at the level of the overall uh, layout level or at the level of neighborhood level, the starting with the hierarchy of roads which will come, the bigger road, wider road, smaller road, coming down from that to maybe uh, uh, six meter or 20 uh, uh, feet road. Then you come down to the streets as well as alley, as well as uh, other places, because these are very important. Our accessibility is very, very important to reach a particular plot. And therefore, you have all the requirements which come in, in dealing with that or depending upon the nature of development. Obviously, the larger development, higher FAR and taller building has to be the necessarily on roads which are wider. And you can't do that in a, in a narrow road because you can't permit that because you're thinking in terms of all the occupants coming over there, the short time, and you got to evacuate at the shortest possible time so that no damage comes to the building or the people coming in that, staying in that. So therefore, that brings you to the next level of all those requirements with the layout into the facilities that's required in terms of not only the residential need, your hospital needs, your education needs, school needs, uh, office needs, market needs, etc. So they're all part of the initial component of the planning standards, which is provided depending on neighborhood level, population of uh, 5,000, 10,000, 20,000, 60,000, 1 lakh, depending upon the population, how do you do the hierarchy of the spaces provided for that when you plan for that? Then you do everything that's required for reaching up to the plot. And then that will cover a very substantial requirement of the development control rules, including the nature of development. How much is the FAR, floor area ratio, depending on how much on the area on all floors divided by the plot area, or Gujarat and uh, uh, Maharashtra call it FSI, not FAR. Uh, some states called FAR, which effectively means the total potential. Up to how many flows can you go? Now you're dealing even with 100 flows. I do remember when I started the building code work in 1970, the tallest building was a 13 story in the LIC in Mount Road in Chennai. But now we are having up to 100 stories building, 60 story, 70 story. So you're going to deal with the requirements to deal with those particular aspects on the spaces, the setbacks, front setback, side setback, rear setback, uh, uh, or the height of the building, you can have the setbacks in you don't require all of the ground level. On other ground level, you require the space for the movement of the vehicles, the, not only the vehicle moving around, the firefighting vehicles to come over there. Those are various details, light and ventilation plane to be looked after. All these are very, very detailed requirements which covers on those particular norms which are required in the particular building. And uh, these are covered in a very, very scientific way, very nice way. And for each occupancies, those details are to be brought in over there. And they're all brought in very clearly into the particular building code. Equally important thing is what has to be the height of the building with respect to the width of the road in front and the front open space. You also require that as a very important uh, requirement of uh, the uh, uh, codal provision and differential rates of FSI and FAR uh, to be taken care of. And also you require the underlying facilities, the width of the road, the water line, your sewer line, your uh, gas line, your power line. You can have very dense development with no infrastructure to back it up. You can have all that coming with so much amount of traffic flowing on the road, et cetera, et cetera. So they're all covered in detail in a very minute manner. 
Then you get on within the fire safety component on the, on the building requirements, what are all the requirements, especially while the part four will give all the requirements of all the firefighting equipments and other related component of, uh, uh, depending upon on a table, if a wet riser or dry riser or sprinkler, etc. those will come in part four in detail, but the space requirement within your particular building and exits and related component, corridor, door width, and other related component, which are life safety related things, are brought in over there. And these are all buildings with the able people as well as disabled people or differently able people, hospitals, people can't even move there, an ICU, whereas in an office space, everybody's agile. In a school building, the young children. So you've got to have all these requirements planned depending upon the way in which the health and the ability of the people to move around fast to evacuation is an important component. And therefore, this part also has got a very interesting table on differently able people. How do you deal with that? Physically challenged or other challenged one? How do you deal with access getting into the from the main road into that? Parking is another major component which is there. It's also part of this particular thing. And then getting out to where we can provide this particular parking related requirement on the ground or in basements, whatever requirements can come. And these are all brought into a very detailed way. I won't have the time to open out in my opening remarks here. It's a wonderful document of a three dimensional space coming on area as well as height into the as well as story heights of the particular building. And at the same time provides the for a fire engineer, the architects, the architects most important over dealing with the space to be created on various floors. What are the ways you can do, deal with that? They're all covered in this particular frame of part three require. And what, I, what I'm very happy is that the latest version of 2016 the National Building Code, I'm sure Santosh will open out on that. We have tried to make it most pragmatic, most open-minded, based on whatever rules are available in Singapore development or Shanghai development or Hong Kong development or any of the best city. So you don't become uh, coming in the way of development. At the same time, functionally, the vehicles are to move around, reach heights as well as area. How do you deal with those particular situations are very important. Graphically, he'll show you all the detail. Uh, my time is already running out. So all I want to tell is that you're going to enjoy the presentation and I'm sure we look forward to very good question answers coming from all you practicing architects or engineers in different parts, including regulating people from the local bodies or fire authorities, etc. Please come up with your questions and post it on the question box. Uh, I'm sure we'll have, uh, I think uh, Dominic always does that. Keeps uh, after our presentation for one hour all together. We kept about 45 minutes for the Q&A. There was a good opportunity to ask all your questions that you have where clarity is required. We are there to completely clarify all of them. Uh, all I want to do is wish uh, Santosh all the best. I'm sure you'll do a, a fantastic presentation. All I want to say is this is the most important part. As I said, the backbone of any building regulation, any city, anywhere in the world. This is the development control rules and the promotion rules and the and the, uh, uh, and the general building requirements, which are covered, packed into this particular one. And therefore, most important, uh, what can I accent document along with the fire protection coming in part four on that. On that positive note, let me say thank you very much, Dominic, for calling me over. I'm, I'm excited to hear uh, what uh, Santosh is uh, presenting on this very, very important topic uh, on uh, the uh, whole topic. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Wonderful opening remarks. You highlighted very important part of this building and for particularly for architects that what part three and part four talks about. And uh, all of you know that uh, we will be uh, soon, you know, next uh, Saturday before uh, Santosh coming on to speaking. So next Saturday, we are talking about national uh, NFPA standards and uh, best practices. Uh, in strategic and evacuation. So this is for next Saturday. The keynote speaker will be our highly respected uh, director of Goa, Mr. Ashok Menon. And we have a speaker from Dubai, uh, Jensen, uh, Jensen Hughes. So this is for next uh, Saturday. So over to Mr. Uh, Santosh Warik. He'll be taking us for next 40 to 45 minutes. Over to Mr. Santosh Warik. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Dominic. And uh, thank you very much, Suresh sir, for this nice introduction of the part three, which is very important. And normally only architects, uh, they deal with uh, this part.
but uh, it is limited to the development control rules of every municipal body or the state uh, jurisdiction so uh, i am taking you through the various provisions of part 3 of national building code and my emphasis will be a special cross reference with the reference to part 4 of national building code that is fire and life safety so it is a development control rule and general building requirement provisions are provided in uh, nbc part 3 so it is visible yeah yeah very visible <laughs> perfect so part 3 covers basically a development control rules including the various aspects of the building layout or the uh, reservations of a master plan Uh, approved by the city or by the state government then the land use classification open spaces around the building the area and height restrictions means of escape parking spaces and also it covers the various general requirement for the building the normally uh, expectations of development control rules uh, to pro, uh, means provide guidelines for town planning and country planning so that the plan development it is possible so that various uh, authorities working uh, in the urban areas will get uh, the facilities uh, for transportation then amenities then various types of occupancies uh, reservations this everything is planned uh, by the local authorities uh, the state government has got uh, authority as per the town planning acts of respective state to frame such guidelines these guidelines are uh, originating from this part 2 and part 3 as already uh, highlighted by suresh sir the urban local bodies it is a very important part uh, so that the resources uh, available uh, in the city that can be accessible uh, with ease and it should be accessible from the various uh, strata means right from the poor to the rich and to from different age group specifically uh, in this new 2016 part 3 edition there is special uh, emphasis is given on the uh, barrier free environment in built environment for the uh, physically challenged people or disabled people uh, so that all guidelines are given as per the international standards that is iso 21542 uh, which gives 2011 edition so then the planning and barrier free environment guidelines issued by government of india then uh, harmonization guidelines and space standards issued by the ministry of urban development department in 2016 this all these guidelines are incorporated in annex b of the uh, part 3 of national building code wherein <coughs> free, uh, barrier free environment is created for all age groups and uh, uh, disabled people then important thing nowadays we are talking about various types of transportation modes maybe bus rapid transaction metro rail mono rail then uh, ring rails so these are provided or promoted by the state government and the central government for the reducing the carbon footprint the pollution levels then reduce the automobile uses in the city and to have the uh, means environment impact minimize the environment impact and uh, to improve the livability and mobility within the city so uh, this transport oriented uh, developments are happening by giving additional fsi around the uh, metro rails or mono rails or bus transit areas wherein you can have the more parking spaces more atrias more uh, common facilities so that it can be easily accessible through this connectivity then rapid urbanization if you see from 2011 census 31.16% uh, growth has been seen in urban areas as compared to 27.8% in 2001 uh, census and it is expected by 21 uh, 2021 it will be around 40% so 40% of the population will stay in the urban areas as compared to rural areas so if you see the number of cities Uh, there were seven nine three three as per the 2011 census, and which will cross uh, around 10,000 in next two decades. 
so already one decade has passed so the population um, migration from the rural to urban is a continuous process due to the rapid uh, urbanization and industrialization in in the country then if you talk about uh, how metro cities having population more than say 50 lakh as per the standards there are uh, eight numbers of cities if the uh, other met, uh, metros mini metros you can say 10 to 50 lakh population so they are 45 in number and 53 cities having above 10 lakh population by 2021 uh, means 53 it will come to uh, around 70 so these are the prediction made considering the urbanization uh, of the country happening in various parts ac across the country so what are the key features already highlighted by suresh sir in his uh, keynote address that uh, various new uh, things are included in this uh, part 3 the definitions of various terms uh, has been modified the land use classification has been modified the provisions of transferable development right this is very important when you are talking about new uh, infrastructure coming up like metros underground metros or any other facilities and if the land is belonging to some uh, person individually they are owning it and if he wanted to uh, have that facility on his land then you have to give him some benefit so that uh, he can use that uh, benefit somewhere else so for that uh, every urban local body gives such type of transferable development rights so that the person can utilize it uh, to the another place Uh, the provisions of the podium which is very important from the metros and mini metros point of view where the parking is a major issue uh, and along the met, uh, metros or uh, monorails also it, uh, to encourage the public uh, parking areas so this kind of multi level car parks and podiums uh, requirements are coming up and uh, the provisions for the movement of fire tender on this podium and around the podium is incorporated the planning norms uh, new norms are incorporated the minimum clearance uh, from the overhead electrical lines as per the electricity regulation uh, rules 2010 has been incorporated then uh, various ventilation light and ventilation requirements for the basements are provided in uh, this part then height restriction in the vicinity of aerodrome that is approach uh, to the airport and departure from the airport the uh, the restrictions in within the funnel what we call uh, they are given as per the civil aviation uh, guidelines then the provisions for mechanized parking various types of parkings they are provided uh, basement uh, use uh, is again uh, modified the accessibility to the building uh, for elderly person and disabled that i have already discussed the solar uh, energy uh, so solar energy utilization they are included so these are the some uh, major land use which are provided in the uh, part 3 of national building code educational facility healthcare facility socio cultural distribution services police fire services telephone and other infrastructure sports activity shopping so based upon the population and the number of uh, uh, citizens uh, in the city the their areas and their planning point of view information is provided that we will see in uh, after some slides so low another features are in the annexures they have included the, the low income housing in urban areas and requirement for the rural habitat then requirement in hilly areas so these annexures are also incorporated in the part 3 of national building code so we will see the basic uh, terms what use in the uh, part 3 the authority having jurisdiction ahj this is one important uh, features uh, which gives uh, this authority is by statute if any body has given powers to regulate the development or the with the uh, act like fire act or uh, development control rules or the planning uh, authorities so that is identified by the code as a authority having jurisdiction and they regulate any development in the that particular area then the definition of uh, building height which is normally measured from the vertical distance from the average uh, ground level 
and to the flat uh, roof or the terrace of the flat roof then in case of flat roof also it can be uh, how it should be measured that is clarified in this uh, definition uh, part of the building height then the development uh, what this is very important uh, from uh, all uh, di uh, disciplines basically uh, it is a grammatical uh, version means to carry out the building engineering mining or other operations in or over or under land or water on the making of any material change in the building or land or in the use of any building land and include redevelopment layout of subdivision of any land and to develop shall construct accordingly so this is very important it covers all means below land uh, also below water also so this definition is very clear for development then fire separation from the fire safety point of view it is very important normally we uh, the architect has been taught that the distance between the building or the marginal spaces are required from light and ventilation point of view but from the fire safety point of view as a exposure hazard it is very important to create a distance between two building so this distance uh, can be measured from uh, external wall of one building to the external wall of another building so that in case of any fire no radiant heat can pass from one building to another or in case of industrial activities any explosion is happening or in case of residential also lpg cylinder blast or something happening so it should not affect the opposite building or adjacent building to it so that is specified as already uh, uh, means explained by suresh sir it is a floor area ratio far is given that the total uh, uh means fs uh, area of all floors divided by the plot so that is the index or a, a quote which is coming as a noted as a far or fsi uh, the master plan which is very important uh, for any town uh, for the development future development of 10 years 20 years or 30 years considering all uh, development the master plan is prepared and the state governments approves it once it is uh, published for the suggestion and objection of the citizens the suggestions and objections are considered from the citizens also or expert groups working uh, on the master plan of the city or town planners and then the government approves it and the development is uh, means carried out as per the approved plan so that is a normal process uh, under uh, any development uh, plan or the municipal uh, bodies every city has got its own development plan and on basis of that only the development happens the occupancy uses already it is national building code part 4 provides various occupancies nine occupancies and their uses and sub divisions are there so similarly same is incorporated over here mixed occupancies the multiple occupancies wherein the occupancies are intermingled they are just like a mall or a, a five star hotel where you have the business centers also occupants then assembly places also residential uh, accommodations also so such type of things then the plinth area the built up covered uh, measured at every floor level uh, including basement so that is uh, basement or any other story that is called as a plinth area setback lines the lines usually parallel to the plot boundary and laid down in each case by the authority beyond which nothing can be constructed so that is the setback like area tower like structures are the structures wherein the width of the base is uh, twice that of the height of the building so that is given uh, as a uh, tower like structures so these are the some land use which are marked on the uh, development plan by the authority so who prepares the uh, master layout they will show the residential as here shown as a residential in yellow commercial in red the primary residential zone and the uh, retail shopping general business uh, uh, provisions wholesale go downs service sectors are shown as a commercial in red then industries shown in the purple uh, light color light industries heavy industries and obnoxious industries they will uh, they will be scattered as per the zoning of the city that is zone 1 zone 2 and zone 3 uh, as provided in uh, national building code part 
then the public uh, and uh, government buildings as a dark blue uh, use land use uh, then mix use are uh, provided in with the light yellow and uh, vertical hatches mix use industrial mix use residential mix use commercial they are provided then the recreation activities light green playground parks garden open spaces then transportation and communication with brown and gray uh, road bus stations railway stations seaports then primary uh, dark green agricultural or forest uh, things are provided with this then you have light blue color that is water bodies uh, lakes and everything is shown in a light uh, blue color and special areas are provided with the pink color where is heritage activities then the government restricted areas such defense areas that can be shown with this so this is the normal if you have the land parcel then you can show uh, means uh, this uh, residential commercial green activities amenity uh, various amenities based upon the uh, road infrastructure accessing each and every plot and state government can approve this and you can carry out development as per the reservations so this is the example of uh, how the plots can be reserved for various types of occupancies or activities then the fire and life safety clause 3.6 uh, gives cross reference of national building code part 4 for fire and life safety for all uh, other means with reference to fire life safety activities then uh, clause 4 means of access so this is very important every plot should have the access uh, from the public ways and the uh, from the main street so that uh, it can be accessible for uh, various daily purposes or use purposes so this code provides uh, various uh, provisions with reference to the residential and other buildings so with reference to the residential building the minimum uh, width of the means of access is provided as a 6 meters to 24 meters and the length of means of access is also provided in table 1 uh, which says uh, how much should be the maximum length of the road and width of the road so that is specified uh, in the table 1 uh, of the uh, part 3 then 3.4.3.1 uh, is for the other building like assembly theater cinema house assemblies and educational buildings wherein the minimum width is specified as 12 meters and length as a 200 meters then the 15 meters and 400 meters 18 meters and uh, 600 meters and 24 meters and above 600 so these are the minimum uh, uh, road width specified for various types of activities uh, uh, if you wanted to have so then you should have minimum that much uh, road width around uh, for approach then the access from the highways if uh, the highways uh, your plot is abetting on the highways then only certain activities are allowed like petrol pumps and motels if uh, the other things are there then they should be on the service road should be provided along with the highway and access shall be provided from that uh, service roads then for high rise building this is very important provision from fire and life safety point of view uh, 4.6 provides it is that the in addition to the national building code part 4 requirements the width of the main street on which the building is abutting shall not be less than 12 meters and the end of such building uh, such road shall join to the another street not less than 12 meters this is very important provision from fire and life safety for the circulation of ambulances and uh, fire appliances in case of any emergency for carrying out evacuation if the road shall not terminate to in the dead end and except in case of the residential building up to height 30 uh, 30 meters so there is a restriction if it is a dead end you cannot have the building height more than 30 meters if your road is uh, having a dead end so again uh, clause c provides very important provisions uh, approach to the buildings and open spaces all around the building shall not be less than six meters with the turning circles of nine meters so we provide only six meter marginal space requirement uh, as per the various codes or fire act but a uh, major issue is the turning circle your big vehicle cannot turn in six meters so you need a minimum nine meters turning circle at the corner of the building 
so that is very important provision also uh, the various uh, services are housed in the marginal open space like uh, sewerage treatment plants then water uh, tanks etc so that should have the capacity to hold the 45 tons point load uh, so that in case of emergency the aerial ladder platform can be pitched in the marginal open space for carrying out external firefighting and rescue operation so this is very important uh, provision uh, from the fire and life safety point of view uh, then uh, the fire, there is a provision given de depending upon the availability of the fire services the plan approval and the access requirement can be approved by the local fire department chief fire officer of respective cities they are empowered to do that the main entrance this is also very important shall not be less than 6 meters in width and the, if the compound is having a gate or arch above it a clearance from uh, the entry point of view it should be minimum uh, 4.5 meters clearance should be there so that uh, it, a vehicle can enter uh, easily within the plot so for a fire and safety point of view this is uh, very important the concept of podium this is upcoming in various metros uh, where the podiums are provided for parking purposes so first time with clear diagrams uh, 4.6.1 provides the concept of podium uh, it is a horizontal projection platform extended beyond the building line uh, and you can utilize it for the various activities uh, like parking so use permitted uh, first is the parking you should uh, can use the parking and the related uh, uh, services like wc urinals and wash basins are provided for 500 car car parks then there is a provision for the di uh, drivers restroom in the residential building fire uh, building utilities can be housed then you, uh, the landscape can be created on the top of the uh, podium and with the parapet wall of 1.6 meters and if uh, it is any commercial or any use are uh, created then it should be counted in fsr so <clears throat> the requirement again specified is the podium may be permitted uh, for the plot above 1500 which is very important uh, if you wanted to keep minimum 6 meters space from all sides then there should be minimum plot size required to have the podium then the ramps uh, if the ramps are provided uh, in the for the podium then it should not be exceed the height of the podium shall not exceed 30 meters from the ground level in case of the podium which is not provided with ramp only with car lift then its height should be restricted up to 9 meters from the ground level so these are the restrictions uh, given in the code uh, for the podium then the ramps requirements are given uh, for the vehicles one way ramp with clear width of minimum 3 meters if two way ramp it is there then the 6 meters for light motor vehicles uh, then 4.5 meter uh, single way and 9 meters two way ramp for the light commercial vehicles and if the vehicle is used by high uh, heavy motor vehicles in that case minimum 6 meters Uh, ramp should be provided and to way it is there then 12 meters clearance the slope shall be maximum 1 in 8 is proposed uh, in the code after every 40 meter length there should be minimum uh, flat surface of 6 meters length so which is given in the uh, figure uh, 8b uh, if the podium is accessible by fire tender minimum 7.5 meter width ramp shall be required for fire engine and the maximum slope is recommended as 1 in 10 so this diagrams provides uh, the requirement for the one way and two way ramps and also the turning circle and uh, requirement for the ramps accessible by the fire tenders the podium shall not be permitted in a required front margin space front margin space are normally utilized uh, for any future development by the urban local body or the regulator authority for carrying out services so in such cases the ramp shall not be permitted uh, then podium uh, if accessible by the fire tender it should uh, take the load of 45 tons minimum 
as per the requirement of fire department point load should be there so that uh, your uh, external fire fighting and rescue work can be possible from the podium then uh, as already uh, told the, the podiums and everything should be accessible by the elderly and disabled persons so that provisions are provided in annex b of the uh, part 3 the requirement for the moment of uh, fire tenders uh, for 15 meters and above building uh, it should be uh, means uh, fire tender should access the all sides so that is provided <coughs> in the this diagram <coughs> sorry 6 uh, meters in this diagram as uh, they have shown from the plot boundary to the uh, podium line 6 meters clear space is there and if you see here if my arrow this path is a fire tender access wherein you can pitch any aerial ladder platform and you can carry out external fire fighting and rescue work so this is a fire tender access provided for this high rise building so it is normally uh, recommended that the floor uh, means if the building total area is up to 10000 square meters then it should have uh, two means uh, Uh, two third of the place, and if it is more than ten thousand, then it should be the half area. Means fifty percent of the external surfaces should be accessible for the fire tenders from the ground level. So these uh, guidelines are provided for the fire tender access uh, with podium. Uh, if podiums are not accessible uh, by the fire tender and building footprints are beyond that, then also minimum six meters driveway and 9 meters turning circles are recommended in the drawings that we will see this we have already discussed the requirement of up to 10000 square meters and beyond 10000 square meters requirement so this is the another drawing provided wherein uh, projections of uh, of podium they are beyond the building line and there is a restriction uh, given <coughs> if you see this uh, means from the building line to the podium line there should be maximum distance of 11 meters this distance my arrow is there so that distance should not be more than 11 meters on either side or any side of the building either on front or sides or on the back so you should have the clear uh, access uh, made available for fire tender to uh, have the external approach to the building so that is the restriction and rest of the area you can have the more than 12 meter podium but at least in 50% area there should be clear uh, access provided around the building with 6 meters and 9 meter turning circle this is a 9 meter turning circle uh, requirement and the 6 meter approach road uh, requirement and on podium from the uh, podium line to the building line it should not be more than 11 meters so this is the requirement provided if the fire tender is accessible by uh, means uh, accessing the podium level in that case the ramp should be minimum 7.5 meters this is the 7.5 meter ramp is proposed for the fire brigade access and fire brigade uh, vehicle can uh, reach to the podium level and the circulation uh, made available on the podium up to 6 meters with 9 meters turning circle so that they can uh, have the uh, access to the various parts of the building so these provisions are provided in the uh, uh, for the podium so this is a very good uh, diagram provided uh, in the uh, part 3 wherein uh, it is shown that if your building is abutting on the external side of the podium you can reach on the upper levels It means external fire fighting and rescue is very much possible from the external side easily with the aerial ladder platform uh, we have now up to 90 meters uh, aerial ladder platform we can reach if the building is uh, inside the podium line so that uh, distance shall not be more than 11 meters so that vehicle can be pitched parallel to the podium and it can reach up to certain height uh, in case of emergency for carrying out fire fighting and rescue operation so this is the a diagram uh, if the uh, podium is not accessible uh, with uh, 
uh, fire appliances, then uh, the arrangement should be made like this. So these are the, uh, as we have already discussed, various amenities are provided in the part three. Some amenities uh, I have highlighted over here. This is the educational ones where the land requirement for uh, 2,500 population is 0 0.08 hectares. Then for the primary school from first to for every 5,000 population and 500 student, uh, 0 0.40 hectares uh, recommended for the population uh, for every 7,500 population with for class 6 to 12. For 1,000 students, 1.80 hectares are recommended. So, healthcare facilities also dispensaries for every 15,000 population. Then the area required for the nursing homes. Then for the hospitals, general hospitals for every 2 lakh 50,000 population, and the capacity of the 500 beds, minimum six uh, hectares land is recommended. And for the other uh, hospitals, four acres and residential accommodation, two hectares, they are recommended in the code. Safety management for the fire station, one fire station for every two lakh population and for one within five to seven kilometers requirement. And the area with residential accommodation should be one hectares. Then sub uh, station is recommended for uh, three to four kilometer radius with essential 0.6 sectors then disaster management center uh, one in each administrative zone that taluka or tarsil you can say sub divisional level office one hectares uh, with open area two hectares in case of uh, temporary shelter and other uh, requirements and the, for the fire training institute colleges uh, three hectares they have recommended. So another feature which was included is the electrical uh, distances from the building, which are very important from uh, the magnetic flux or if lightning is happening, then it may create a danger to the building. So electrocution may happen to the occupants. So to avoid that, minimum distances are specified from the building lines uh, uh, vertically and horizontally uh, from the building. So these are as per the Indian electricity rules that the Central Electricity Authority has issued one regulation in 2010. Based upon that, uh, these guidelines are incorporated in the uh, part three. So clearances uh, for 650 uh, volts, they have specified in uh, the code and uh, it means uh, various uh, residential ones and uh, other uh, buildings also. So clearances they have given for the flat roof or open balconies, verandas, it should be minimum uh, vertical distance of 2.5 meters from the highest point and adjacent uh, to the building or horizontal clearance should be minimum 1.2 meters. For pitch roof, again the same uh, vertical distance of 2.5 meters immediately under the line and uh, if it is uh, horizontal then the clearance should be 1.5 meters if voltage is up to uh, uh, 650 volts the horizontal clearances shall have the maximum deflection in case of wind pressure so that new feature has been incorporated in the uh, uh, this provisions in case of uh, gushing winds uh, if the deflection is of, uh, happening then you should uh, have that in uh, that has to be calculated. Then again, a uh, second uh, re requirement is given. If the distances uh, are less, then it should be properly insulated and have the breaking strength of not less than 350 kgs. If the, if the voltages are uh, more than, say, 650 volts, then again, requirements are increasing up to 37, uh, 3.7 meters. And for every 33 point, uh, 33 kVA volts, uh, 0 0.30 meters should be increased. So horizontal distances also for voltage exceeding 650 up to 11 uh, kV, it is 1.2 meters. And if it is going from 11 kVA to 33 kVA, then distance should be minimum 2 meters. Uh, and again, if uh, it is going beyond uh, 33 kVA, then uh, 2 meter plus 0.3 meter for every additional 33 kVA. 
so for high voltage uh, currents uh, these are the requirements uh, direct voltage current from 100 to 800 and the vertical clearances and the horizontal clearances are provided in part 3 which is very important from the safety electrical safety point of view then uh, as already suresh sir told that uh, classification of building is very important depending upon use to uh, restrict the uh, fire load and uh, to um, provide the minimum fire protection requirements so that is specified uh, with reference to part 4 of national building code then type of construction is also specified with reference to uh, table 1 of part 4 of national building code wherein type 1 type 2 type 3 and type 4 construction is recommended type 1 is as we say it is a 4 hours fire resistance uh, 2 is uh, 3 hours uh, type 3 is 2 hours and type uh, one, uh, 4 is uh, one hour fire rated. So normally these uh, guidelines are given in uh, table one of National Building Code part four. The again important, very important feature uh, with cross reference uh, from National uh, Building Code part four that is fire and lab safety related to open spaces. So every uh, room should habit on the internal or external open spaces for drawing light and ventilation or to have the proper livable spaces or working spaces. So considering that uh, various provisions are made. So with reference to the residential building, with reference to the height of the building, uh, normal thumb rule is height divided by three is made applicable in this table four of wherein the side and uh, or rear open spaces are specified. If you uh, go up to above 15 meters uh, building height, if you see the building height is 15 meters then you have you should have the minimum uh, open spaces of 5 meters 18 meters 6 meters if it is 30 meters then 10 meters then if it is 50 meters 14 meters 70 meters 17 meters 120 meters uh, 18 building height 120 meters 18 meters should be open space and above 120 20 meters so these are guidelines given uh, in this table uh, for the uh, light and ventilation point of view and as we have already discussed it is very important from the exposure hazard point of view and also for the circulation of fire appliances for external firefighting and rescue operations. So tower like structure this is point uh, again uh, very important uh, to have the development uh, wherein if the building height is 24 meters you can have minimum 6 meter clear margin space at ground level and you can take one setback to uh, compromise the remaining uh, marginal space requirement in case of 24 meters to 37.5 meter building you can have 9 meters at ground level and you can have one upper level setback if the height is between 37.5 meters to 70 meters you can have two setbacks but minimum uh, ground level you should have 12 meters. If the building height is between 70 meters to 120 meters with two setbacks, you can have ground level minimum 14 meters and other marginal spaces you can have on, on the two setbacks. The height, if it is going beyond 120 meters, you should have minimum 16 meters at ground level and whatever remaining you can have with two setbacks. So, these are the guidelines given in code here uh, they have properly explained with diagram in the code so up to 24 meter building height you can have minimum ground level six meters and remaining uh, uh, setbacks you can take on upper level so it is a temple uh, like uh, structure you can have uh, this uh, is very uh, useful for as a open terrace also from the temporary refuse till you get uh, support from the fire services in case of emergency. Uh, these setbacks can be utilized. If the building height is up to 37.5, then minimum ground level 9 meters and you can take one upper level setback. Here also uh, from 37.5 to 70 meters, minimum ground level you should have 12 meters and you can have two setbacks. First setback at this level, second setback at this level h by 3 you can have and you can extend this up to uh, means if it is 70 meter to 120 meters then you should have minimum 12 meter uh, 14 meters at ground level and you can have two uh, upper level setbacks so in case of buildings beyond 120 meters minimum 16 16 meters at ground level 
and you can have uh, upper level setbacks to uh, meet the light and ventilation requirements so other occupancies uh, if we are talking about the marginal spaces provided for the educational building which are very important nowadays uh, every school required the fire safety clearance from the uh, uh, to approve that school every year uh, uh, cbsc or any school they request uh, local fire authorities to grant approval so for initial stages the open spaces from all around the school shall be minimum 6 meters for institutional hospital building again it is not less than 6 meters and it shall govern to the height but for the educational and institutional building there is a cap uh, provided in uh, below table 7 that height should not be more than 30 meters so uh, you have to regulate uh, all developments below 30 meters in case of educational and institutional building uh that now the institutional is increased up to 45 meters depending upon the various uh, uh, availability of resources that we will discuss later uh, assembly building again the open space front should shall not be more than 12 meters and other open spaces uh, of 6 meters yeah, area and height limitations uh, which is specified in 9 clause 9 of the part 3 Uh, height restrictions are depending upon these parameters these parameters are loudly and clearly mentioned in the code where it depends upon the occupancy <clears throat> as i have told you already uh, we have restriction for the hazardous storages then uh, hazardous industries then uh, for the educational and institutional occupancies in national building code part 4 under table 7 then this the occupancies are governed with that and the type of construction that also we have discussed as with reference to the provisions of part 4 of national building code type of construction which is very important in case of type 1 construction uh, the unlimited uh, building height can be granted uh, then the width of the street uh, on which it is uh, abutting then the traffic load availability of uh, fire services then the density in that area parking uh, facilities made available water supply and drainage other facilities so all this we have to consider while granting approval to the maximum building height in that particular area which is clearly specified in this clause the so again there are certain uh, guidelines as as already suresh sir told that maximum building height shall not exceed 1.5 times the width of the road abutting and plus the front marginal spaces provided in the building uh, subject to maximum 16 meters so that we have to consider uh, and allow the building to come up in that particular area if the building is abutting on the uh, two or more roads then you should have the greater width regulation uh, building in the vicinity of aerodrome as i have already told you there is, there are some restriction with reference to the Uh, aviation rules wherein the approach uh, for the aircraft and the departure of the aircraft that we call it as a funnel so if your plot is falling within the funnel zone in that case uh, there is a restriction to the building height and you have to obtain approval from the civil aviation government of india for the that particular building height and it should not uh, means every local authority has to follow these rules and uh, on the clearance from the civil aviation only the building approvals or the commencement certificate can be issued to that particular building for that particular height these are the depending upon type of construction uh, type 1 type 2 type 3 type 4 uh, and the various kind of uh, occupancies right from residential education institutional assembly buildings mercantile industrial storage and hazardous so uh, how much fsi can be granted with reference to at least 9 meters load so as i have told you various parameters uh, already we have discussed based upon that uh, the local authority can grant higher fsi so in certain areas uh, uh, the, for the certain occupancies higher fsis are granted for residential uh, ho uh, ho hotels buildings uh, up to 4 fsi can be granted or sometimes it is more than that also can be granted but there is, there are some uh, guidelines wherein uh, they are listed in clause 2 under note 
that the density of the dwellings, traffic condition, parking uh, spaces, local fire service facilities, and water drainage. These are the key factors which shall govern the maximum building height uh, in addition to the road width. The other requirements of uh, plot, um, plot related to the buildings uh, they have given in this code, like uh, plinth, habitable room, what should be the minimum size of the habitable room, what should be light and ventilation, what should be the kitchen, bathroom sizes, mezzanine floors, then uh, height uh, uh, not less than minimum 2.7 for the habitable rooms, the areas of bathrooms. So again, one an important feature from the fire and life safety point of view is the basement, which is a very challenge uh, area in case of uh, fire, that the visibility is very poor and uh, it is very challenging for every fire services to deal with the basement. Uh, so for this basement, there are various guidelines issued. The uh, use permittable for the basement uh, that is uh, used for the storage uh, and the strong rooms, bank sellers, air conditioning equipment hand, uh, handling, then the car parking, these are the uh, uh, provisions made in this uh, rule. Then basement can be permitted uh, beyond the ground, means beyond the building line, uh, so that how much it should be, the clearances given in the in this code and the mechanical ventilation requirement uh, for the ventilating the basement, then minimum height for the basement, it should at least 2.4 meter height uh, from the slab to the ground level. Then the adequate uh, ventilation uh, as per the uh, requirements, codal requirement, and uh, the basement should come up minimum 0.9 meters to 1.5 meters above ground so that in case of everything fails at least natural ventilation is possible from this 0.9 meters to 1.2 uh, meter height above ground this is specified in this diagram clearly so this is my building and this is my basement line so from the plot uh, boundary to the basement line, it should be minimum three meters. In case of front road, so it should be minimum 4.5 meters from the road uh, or your comp front compound wall to the basement line. And the plinth level uh, from the ground level to the, uh, your uh, ground level to the basement level, it should be minimum 0.9 to 1.2 meters so that natural ventilation can be possible or you have to have the uh, cut off uh, spaces in the basement so that you can ventilate uh, the basement uh, in case of emergencies or you can have the mechanical ventilation system to draw uh, products of combustion out of the basement. So other important features provided uh, in the annexure uh, of the, this code, uh, the requirement as we have an extra B requirement for the accessibility for built environment for elderly and disabled person. And an extra C provides the requirement for the low income housing uh, groups of, of in the cities, urban areas. Uh, there are various uh, slum rehabilitation projects are going on in various cities. There, these guidelines are very useful. Uh, then the special requirement for the cluster planning uh, for the old cities or where congested uh, housings are there. So you, you can have the redevelopment with the uh, uh, combining two, four pl uh, plots, adjacent plots and uh, have a regulated development. Then the special requirement for low income ha habitat in rural areas to meet uh, the requirement for the uh, uh, rural housing. Then the special requirement for the development in hilly areas. So these are detailed annexures are provided along with the uh, part three, uh, wherein they can be used for various types of development. The key issues, uh, what I see, it is uh, provisions of part three. Normally they are discussed uh, with the development uh, uh, planners or only architect. Uh, they are not uh, discussed in various open platforms and they get limited up to architects and the town planners uh, in the city. Then uh, that 
should be discussed because they are very important if you are owning land in any of the rural or uh, developed uh, cities then what reservation you should uh, means know about it uh, on your land and whether the land is acquired by the government for the road infrastructure for any other amenities so you should know of uh, these uh, provisions of part 3 and uh, your city development plans uh, reservations then the provisions of part 4 uh, uh, adaptability a and part 3 adaptability in development control rules and fire act of respective state which is very important uh all this uh, part 3 part 4 and including as suresh sir uh, already told part 2 is also very important so all this should be incorporated in the syllabus of civil engineering and architectural colleges so that uh, from the initial stage only they will come to know the various uh, provisions which are very important from fire life safety and livability point of view there are limited uh, training facilities also available in the country for urban planning and uh, 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 fire safety uh, uh, requirements the interdepartmental uh, coordination is also very important aspect uh, the all stakeholders right from the owner of the plot uh, developer then the authority municipal authorities or urban development departments uh, the fire services architect they should have uh, the co better coordination from uh, fire life safety and visibility of the building and general community awareness is very important uh, of this subject so uh, the only enforcement through various building bylaws uh, building rules planning standards development control rules fire regulations or fire act town planning rules hazardous mapping uh, rules or water supply or drainage so all this uh, requirements codal requirements of part 3 part 4 uh, and uh, uh, part 2 also shall have the cross references in various statute so that uh, uh, collectively we can be in a position to give better usability to the building and better safe environment so that is all from my side thank you very much for the patience listening dominic over to you yes sir uh, thank you so much uh, uh, suresh uh, sir you want to have any comment uh, before we take up the questions um first of all i want to congratulate santosh warik for an outstanding presentation and he has covered all the grounds that i that i expected her to do that i had also opportunity to see large number of comments which are coming on the chat box as well as the q and a from uh, vinay deshpande vijay anand swarup uh, so many other people there i'm sure when you read out those questions we'll be able to give replies because we are now more than around 45 minutes to an hour for all the q and a for all those people about 34 questions are there we can uh, easily cover each of them reply can be given short replies will be given but not subsequent question answer session but we'll give the reply but later on if anybody wants more than that they can always uh, email to me as well as to uh, santosh warik and to you of course you yourself know the topic on that but otherwise is a excellent job done coming as the chief fire officer of maharashtra and also the director of the maharashtra state fire services for all the industrial townships in a large way a presentation of this nature on normally there are all experts in part 4 for it to come in part 3 he has done a very creditable job santosh my uh, congratulations to you for a great presentation and for vividly bringing you through good sketches and uh, explaining those details in a very large way which should, should be appreciated equally many people did not even know i'm sure even now today of course you have a very good audience over 350 at one point now about 303 but therefore for them this is very important the link between both the parts and why is the why are those provisions written very important for people to understand why provisions are written like that sometimes they may not understand you given the background to each of them also why it is done therefore the the background behind that uh, i will stop at this point of time let's give time for as many questions and answers uh, i'm sure you would uh, take the opportunity to present all the questions dominic and uh, uh, yeah. my my rule is that since the major major presentation is done by uh, uh, santosh uh, i think 70% of the reply he will do 30% i'll chip in wherever there is any problem at santosh level i'll chip in for giving more clarifications okay on the ground roots to take it forward thank you sir once again uh, thank you mr santosh wari it's wonderful 
very well uh, you know, briefed uh, on part three and relevant to part four. So I will take the first question from uh, Vinay Deshpande and a very important question that is raised. Is there any standard for fire service to respond a response time that is considered and require a traffic impact study during planning stage? That is Vinay Deshpande's question. So he's asking, what is the fire service response? Yeah, yeah, response. What is the response time? I think this is your topic. Yeah, response response time. Yes. During response. the planning stage. He's asking for the planning stage. Yeah, yeah. Sandosh will do that. Response time is normally for the urban areas, uh, means it is expected to be a five minutes and it, rural area maximum 20 minutes. So based upon that, uh, any traffic impact study can be done. And uh, you can see uh, which, where is the location of nearest fire services available from the plot. And you may see the traffic condition during peak hours and that is doable. But normally it has not been done. In cities at least, uh, it is very difficult. Uh, I have not uh, come across any such type of document uh, okay. done by any of the developer. I, I think, uh... I think Santosh, if I may say, one other in all fairness to you, you did indicate in the original one when you talked about the space needed, you require the fire station in each of the location within over two kilometers. Any particular thing within a particular area, within two kilometer zone, you should have the fire station available. Many cases, they are much, much beyond. Namely, the number of fire stations required uh, for each of the city for its population, the way it's gone, is much, much more than what is provided. So therefore, response times become as much more. So therefore, what happens is since the response time is becoming much, much more and fire facilities are not there, more so in industrial township and other related one, you got to give inbuilt fire protection yourself in your building with automatic sprinklers and all, and not necessarily depend upon the fire brigade to come and fight the fire for you. So it'll be a combination of inbuilt fire protection plus also capacity of the fire brigade coming. There are many developments where when fire brigades are not there, developers themselves provide the facilities for the fire station, put the cost for the fire station, including initial investment so that they have the protection available from the firefighting team also. It's a good question, but I think what you told is the right one. Internationally, also the same time is there. Five minutes is the type of time required, but many cases at five will become sometimes 20 minutes, 30 minutes. Many case times they say half an hour time it took for the fire brigade to reach over there, you know. It comes on that. Let's go to the next question. Okay, sir. It's from uh, Anirban Mandal. He is asking uh, insulated metal fiber, how many minutes has been proposed in NBC? I think everybody knows minimum is two hours. So I'll skip this question, but this is quite yeah. common question. Uh, Tan yeah. Sharma from Australia. Tan Sharma. That's, that's already uh, clarified. That is already yes, clarified earlier in various things. What is talking within the building, that response time of the fire brigade is different from the time required for evacuation. That is already indicated already in a two minutes time period from a room to a door, through the corridor, to the staircase and getting out. Those details are already av available. That will come in the part four, not in the part three. The first question and the second question are not necessarily the same. They are different. Okay. Uh, Tan Sharma from Australia, sir, is asking to Mr. Suresh, sir, as a vice chairman of NBC committee, currently the performance-based engineering solutions are not given due weightage in the NBC. Who said? We look forward in incorporating. Sir, sir, who said that? Everything is performance based. As a matter of fact, all that the code says, everything is performance based indication over there. If you say, I require a one hour fire resistance, a door or a wall or a compartment over there, it is that. So, what is it that gives you the one hour is performance? Therefore, is it going to be a uh, 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 brick with so much thickness over there? Or is it going to be stone with some other thickness? Or you got a wonder material that is evolved? That, so everything is depending upon that. Once you indicate everything is performance-based requirement on that. So therefore your information that performance base is not given a thing is completely misinformation, disinformation and lack of information and not the right information. Please read provisions of the building code. Travel distance is a, is a functional requirement. Namely, how much time it will take for you to reach on the particular one. Capacity for unit exit rates. How much time it will take for you in a two minutes time for you to uh, standing one behind the other for you to move around. So there are all requirements based on that. Your classification for all the fire resistance uh, 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 
uh, not only rating related one, how much should be the column, how much for the beam, how much for the wall, how much for the door, how much for the uh, uh, glass with various requirements or the Q values and the R values and fire resistance rating. If that is not performance, what is it? Maybe you're not aware of the NBC 2016 version, sir. I can say NBC 2016 version is one of the finest sports anywhere in the world can compete with the best sports available in respect of performance. But where we are not able to test it, performance means you've got good testing facilities, assessment facilities. So in such cases, we'll say that minimum so much thickness, that is the prescriptive. So combination of the performance-based requirement along with prescriptive where testing facilities are. For example, fire row, if you want to have the fire resistance routing of a door there, only a CBRI had the facilities there. So only now expanded over the last few years on each one of the product or what they have to know the resistance rating. It's taking a little longer time. So India's development needs today, unless you back it up with a lot of testing facilities in the public sector, private sector, technological institution, the performance requirement will not be able to reach the goal. So to that extent, we have indicated if you can't achieve that, Say, think of, for example, it says uh, 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 one hour thing can be about 35 millimeter or two or one and a half hours can be 40 millimeter. I'm talking about the door thickness for the door. So therefore, that's backed up with that particular thing also. I hope that clarifies uh, uh, over to you. Uh, you can uh, okay, exchange. I uh, move, to, yeah, move to the next question from Ganesh. He is asking, what should be the fire separation distance between two commercial buildings? Is there any relaxation if buildings have one or two hours fire resistance rated external glass facade, uh, for the facade or a drencher and the sprinkler provided for fire protection of glass facade? Sandesh, Sandesh, you can take no, it. no, no relaxation is there with reference to the distance between the two buildings. If you are going for the fire rated uh, uh, means glass facade or you are going for the sprinklers or drenchers. Uh, so only in case of you are not drawing light and ventilation uh, from outside, if it is a dead wall, in uh, so both the dead walls are there, in that case, you can reduce down the distance between the two uh, buildings, edge by three, instead of that, to the minimum of uh, eight meters, as per the uh, codal requirements. Absolutely right, sir. You're right. Uh, the one question uh, from Mr. Prasanna Kumar, our previous uh, in a webinar uh, uh, speaker, uh, is asking in residential campus if MLCP done for parking for resident avoiding basement will it be called mixed occupancy? No, mixed occupancy is a word that is used primarily when different uses are coming over there. For example, you can have a large number of buildings which are there. We can have the shopping on the ground floor or the first floor, like a mall component. You can have office spaces above, above that can be residential spaces coming. Uh, mixed occupancy is where within the vertical heights or horizontal distances, two, three uses are coming. Normally they were all not provided, but 2016 opened up and saying that you do provide mixed occupancy is a good thing to happen over there shop come residences, office come residences, such mixed uses over there. Just because you're providing the parking in a separate one, that will not become a mixed occupancy. If it is purely residential, then that's it. Uh, let's understand, if parking and multi-level car parking is provided, that will not make it a mixed occupancy coming over there. So therefore, understand how many uses are there in the building at vertically and horizontally within the same building block. That's what will decide finally on the mixed documentary. Sandosh, you want to open up? Yeah, yeah, that is true. That means you can have the uh, shopping at ground level, then you have the parking uh, podium uh, above it, and then the residential or commercial building. So in that case, it uh, it is a mixed occupancy, but only thing requirement respective uh, uh, occupancy should be provided with minimum fire protection and the separation should be minimum of four hours fire resistance uh, wall. So you can segregate that risk. So that is the requirement. Let's move to the next question. From question from Swarup Nagar. Road width. He's talking about road width. This yeah, regulation yeah. is for only yeah, the... I, I, I see this question. I see this question. The answer is yes. Whether it is a public road or internal... I think if you, if you would have heard his presentation detail, it also talks of layout. Within the layout, it talks of hierarchy of roads coming. 
width of the road and the length of the road. So let's say we are going to have a, a hundred acre township coming from a main highway, which is public road. And then you have internal layouts which are coming over there. Are those internal layouts will have roads of different hierarchy, a 40 feet road of 12 meter, 30 feet road of 9 meter, 20 feet road of 6 meter, etc, etc. You have there. So all these provisions that are there within the particular one uh, code is equally applicable to the subdivided internal roads and streets or alley, whatever you want to call that. It's all functional. It's all performance based. So whatever would be the width of the road, therefore, provide those things. You can't make a, uh, uh, a six meter road and go in it for one kilometer. No way. There is a length restriction of that particular thing, not beyond that. Breaks have to come to those particular ones. So the answer is, is it applicable? Yes. The answer is, yes, it's applicable. Uh, sir, I'm reading out the question because participants will not be aware of what question they have oh, raised. So I thought it's not the Participants okay. know, okay. so they will not be able to uh, understand okay. the question. So I, I will... I'll go to Ganesh, though I said we will not take more than two questions. I'll take this Ganesh from Ganesh. In commercial buildings, we have false ceiling extended up to glass facade. My question is, can we have a sprinkler placed on the false ceiling for protect, protection of external glass facade? Is it a code requirement to place them at the highest point above the false ceiling for protection of glass facade? You want to take it, Sandosh? No, if you it is a false ceiling, then... How the means if it gets activated that sprinkler, how it will cover your glass facade if it is below the false ceiling. So it should be uh, outside the false ceiling. Then only it can cover your glass facade. Correct. I think uh, in addition to that, the NBC 2016. I'm not sure Mr. Ganesh has gone through or not. It has got very interesting thing on buildings which are made of glass facades there. For the first time, we have brought in the requirement. Previously, it was all taboo earlier. A 10% minimum openable thing to be done in the case of uh, glass is put over there. I'm not sure whether you're aware or not. not. In addition to part four, five protection, where all these details are there, you also have the structural glazing covered in part six, section eight. This is the first time structural glazing has been covered. But then that is a structural system. The whole a uh, wraparound of the building is on that particular structural system coming on that. It's also covered. So therefore, you have got in addition to the 10% openable component, you've got drenches coming or the type of sprinklers which can also ought to also be put along with the particular uh, walls. But as you, as, you, as uh, Santosh rightly clarified, anything beyond the false ceiling, it also depends what is the distance up to which that particular impact can come. Even if fire can be generated from below, if that particular um, sprinkler can be activated, if it's too far away, it will not have its impact. Each have got a throw coming on that. I'm sure each will have an impact area for each of the sprinkler nozzles coming on that. But the direct answer that uh, Santosh has given is the right thing that you should proceed with. Drenches are the right thing, which are also available linked with the sprinklers, which linked with the uh, glass facade. Sir, you have a suggestion from Prasanna saying that every state is changing the driveway width and loading also differs. Can we standardize on this? Driveway of course, it is standardized. For different widths, are different values are indicated. If, you, if the road capacity is not there, if you're having only a 20 feet road, then you have only limited development on that road, but you want to have a larger development coming over there, then you link it with the road. Maybe Prasanna should know that this concept is answered so beautifully by Andhra Pradesh and now the Telangana and Andhra Pradesh. That's the only uh, two states in the country where all of them, all of them are linked to the width of the roads. The, the direct answer to Prasanna. Uh, they are standardized. So if you have more width from 6, 9, 12, 18, 60 feet, 100 feet, all the, the roads there, then development can be more of a larger height. You know, they don't have any F FSI or FAR rules. The only two states where no FSI, FAR rules are Andhra Pradesh and Telangana, where everything is linked with, as uh, uh, Santosh has said, width of the road and the open space in front. That will decide. Full stop. No further. It will be side saying, setback, side setback, front setback, width of the road. That will de decide your total one. No separate rules be beyond that. So it's so he's, saying, uh, he's, he's saying different states got a different rules. So it has got to be in line with NBC. Simple. All states have to fall in line. But that's already happening. 
the in respect of fire if i am not mistaken santosh can clarify all the states are taking nbc part 4 as a requirement they don't write anything in the thing beyond that only on heights of buildings over there uh, beyond a certain height requirement your fire provisions will become automatic nbc has put as 15 meters some state has put 16 meters adding one more meter above that and we never put the number of stories somebody has put more than four stories no our idea is that that 15 meter rule that we have put beyond which we should provide all the fire safety provision is linked with linked with the lifts to be provided beyond that capacity of the people to reach beyond that walking on your own is that limit of around not five stories but 15 meter high beyond that the panting will start it's also normally uh, 80% of the cities do not have the fire fighting facilities or ladder or you reach heights beyond that at one point of time Bombay had the rules of more than 80 feet or 24 meters was the limit up to which their particular thing. But now they have hydraulic tables which can go up to even 200 uh, 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 feet uh, height or 60 meters. So it all depends on what facilities you will have for dealing with the particular one. But otherwise, please go with the provisions of NBC Part Three and Part Four. And on most of the states, according to me, 90% of the states have adopted NBC provisions Part Four in full. without any change under the fire and uh, uh, fire services act they adopted part 4 as the document for them to guide by so question from swarup nagar on Again, the sir. fire truck setback generally fire? fire truck fire truck in setback or fire tender okay. in setback yeah i, I think so uh, mr uh, santosh swarup right? generally okay, it is yeah. green is generally it is green with soft landscaping will the fire tender move in setback or on a road provided around the building in that case is it necessary to have a slab for underground facilities in green with local carrying capacity for fire tender i think it's so actually it is expected the that uh, the external fire fighting and rescue work will happen from the roads provided uh, around the building not from the greens so yeah, yeah. you can have the play area or the mandatory tree plantation required as per the local rules uh, on the external side but along the uh, very close to the building line you should have the proper uh, pakka road where you can fire uh, plants can be pitched or your aerial ladder uh, uh, means jacking can be possible so that minimum 6 meters or 9 meters or 12 meters whatever it, as per the building height it should be left uh, open without any encumbrances or parking so that the fire brigade uh, vehicle movement should be always uh, kept free of any obstructions and so you further clarified uh, santosh santosh you further clarified i think you didn't open out that it should have a capacity for a 45 ton vehicle to move that means the slab thickness of that particular one will not be the normal 6 inches and it will be 18 inches thick so that that load can be there for that one to move around so it's important it can be on the ground or maybe if it is part of a little basement because some other thing can go basement can go beyond the building line you also showed so you got to ensure that its carrying capacity also should be 45 ton no way it can be on a on a landscape <laughs> so the answer is very clear Thank sir you. yogita m pawar is asking convenience store come sale building in a petrol bomb and uh, pre sex is equal to yes comes under which classification of building it's a mixed use uh, occupancy it will cover two things hazardous which is petroleum and all that the other one is retail so therefore there is also a rule if the depending upon if you have most of the area what is the predominant occupancy that comes that will decide finally what do we think if you are having say around 3000 square meter of the petrol bunk coming and you have only around uh, 100 or 200 uh, square meter of uh, this convenience shop coming on that even though by rule that convenience shopping will come under the mercantile mercantile use the other one will be hazardous but overall larger requirement will come under that particular predominant one santosh ji you can uh, open out on that yeah yeah correct sir it is a incidental uh, means uh, occupancy or you can say it is uh, supporting to the petrol pump so it is not a major uh, uh, occupancy major will be the potential risk is of the petrol storage or diesel storage uh, stored in that particular plot 
but within the shopping over there other requirements of the building code will be applicable as for mercantile or a shopping needs so there the hardest the tougher one will not come i just thought clarity on that yeah right so navin kumar want clarification on nbc 2005 there was a clause mentioned on evacuation time that is 15 minutes from minutes to 2.5 minutes but in navin navin you are navin you are navin you are in history come on it's a shame <laughs> that you are talking of 2005 version 2016 version has come national gazette four years is in operation so don't even talk why don't even why talk. the evacuation time is removed he is asking don't why even, don't even no. talk of that Pre it is not 15 <laughs> minutes previously means this time with proper diagram we have uh, included other features basically exit discharge then the uh, capacity of the exits and all that so with reference to that if the building height is say 100 meters or 30 story sure. so it is not possible to evacuate entire building within 1.5 minutes or 2.5 minutes it will take another 20 minutes also 30 minutes also floor by floor <laughs> Each not necessarily building. every building means entire building has to be evacuated it may be staggered uh, kind of a evacuation so considering all this uh, uh, aspect based upon the international practices uh, we have adopted uh, this practice we have removed old timings uh, with reference to the type of construction and we have provided general guidelines for the exit discharge so number of uh, staircases number of uh, passage their widths specifying so that it will ensure that uh, easy evacuation is possible from all floors for in various uh, conditions of the building it means in case of add, <laughs> if i can add one more line the each one is each one is coming up to each of the floor which will be uh, cleared out from the room to the corridor to the staircase or ramp to a safer place which has got external ventilation company come fire tower combined has come in for the building code for the first time refuge areas have been brought in over there at various floors every three or four floors refuge areas for you to come and uh, uh, see we are also going to bring with the higher heights of 60 stories and even 100 stories building code has got provisions of also taller building coming including the part on lifts which are on part 8 section uh, five of the nbc if you read together it will also talk even though the standard rules in case of fire don't use lifts but for higher heights of buildings over there that is a we are also having fire evacuation lifts also being now brought in over there because you can't get down from 80th floor or a 60th floor an elderly man to walk down or climb down so you require sometimes help on that that is why uh, this is the right time for you to say uh, on hospital buildings we had this limit of uh, 30 meters height uh, uh, over there earlier 10 story maximum it has been permitted to be extended up to 45 meters but with the proviso this also was told by variksha but he didn't open out then that's because uh, you will ensure that all the critical care operation theaters icus all the people uh, doing the uh, press pregnancy delivery young babies pediatric they will all be there in the lower heights of 30 meters the 30 to 45 meters can be other uses where people are active alive and where movements are restricted as a result of their own conditions over there that will be restricted to 30 meters so this is an answer also that while you might permit up to 45 meters for the hospitals in the nbc we are provided as in 30 meters in 2005 version but uh, the real we are restricted that only up to 30 meters for all the critical care aspects including all the operation theaters and the other real critical one uh, varik sir anything you want more add out there no that's it so we'll move fast we have 60 question to answer what is the minimum driveway width and re turning radius requirement for non high rise building non high rise building uh, we don't require we require this 9 meter turning radius only for buildings which are more than uh, uh, 15 uh, 15 meters height so normally the th thumb rule is h by 3 so yeah. depending upon if you talk about uh, less than 15 meter building that may be minimum 3 meters in case of uh, your uh, residential ones and uh, 4.5 meter in case of other uh, occupancies that is the minimum you, if you are talking you about low rise you have shown, shown that also i mean one of yes. the table you showed yeah yeah table Open scale the height of the building you have covered it also sir uh, vinay is asking uh, clarify the difference between high rise building and tower like structure high rise buildings uh, the it is uh, dependent upon the total height of the building from the average ground line 
and the tower like structure it is the your length and width of the building is more than the twice double the uh, length of and the width of the building is uh, 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 with respect to height then it is called as a tower like structure so there is a hardly difference uh, in it uh, but uh, it is one high rise building is governed with the height uh, criteria and this is the width the building height should be double the base or the length or width whichever is more that is the only difference between two okay sir i hope uh, the question is answered uh, properly on this sir yogendra is asking what is the rating to be considered for the convenience store come sell a building in petrol pump area premises what is the rating have to be considered fire rating you want to take it santosh uh, separation it is as per if it is a mixed occupancy there is a segregation is recommended yeah. of four mm -hmm. hours in case of mixed occupancy but here i don't think it is required because it is a small incidental it is not a regular kind of a thing it is not a public uh, uh, means uh, activity those who are coming for filling up the petrol or diesel only those limited people will enter into that uh, place it is uh, though it is a public but uh, i think the occupancy wise it is very less at any given point i don't think more than 10 people will be there in that particular area so, so i move uh, divesh you are smoke detector mandatory inside residential flat as per nbc because they have a problem in pune fire authorities uh, so there is insisting so is there any nbc does it say nbc is... table 7 provides it uh, the sprinkler requirement for residential buildings are above 45 meters and for detection i think it is 60 meters so if the building height of the flats uh, are going beyond 60 meters uh, then the you have to put uh, detection system inside the building. yeah sir nikhil think... wanted uh, explain fire zone what is fire zone uh, dominic dominic half a minute i think part for the building code is covered in many session we can do once again one more in case they want but that particular part has got this table 7 it's one of the finest documents only four pages document in the code there it covers all the uh, all the occupancies uh, in the uh, vertical including heights of building and horizontally it will cover about 16 tables over there and then will cover what you want wet riser dry riser sprinkler detector uh, all those alarm system uh, storage of water everything that one table gives like a capsule what is needed for all types of buildings that you have in the country of different heights along with the various table i want everybody to take note of that most of the cases you will have answers coming in table number 7 originally it was a table 23 in the 2005 version which has become table 7 in the 2016 version sorry go ahead oh thank you thank you fire, very good information yeah. fire zone actually it is a provision of part 4 of national building code wherein if you are planning a new city or a new town in that case the fire zones are provided zone 1 zone 2 and zone 3 where in in core area you should have all residential and supporting uh, activities like educational hospitals uh, then uh, assembly then in uh, zone 2 you should have the moderate uh, uh, means uh, low hazard industrial activities and other uh, uh, activities and in uh, zone 3 the, which is last layer of the city where you can have hazardous and obnoxious industries storages uh, activities hazardous storage activities so these are the requirement given in part 4 of national building code as a fire zones so which activities can be allowed in zone 1 zone 2 and zone 3 are specified in uh, clause 3.2 of part 4 of national building code yeah one more point we told is even though height of the building for the fire requirement shown as 15 meters there is a sub clause coming under that either 15 meters all buildings over there or any building which has got more than horizontal area more than 500 square meter and if they are sensitive users the authority having jurisdiction like fire authority that's why the definition also was read out by santosh there they can decide to put the provision that means so even for buildings which are lower in height than 15 meters and if it is of a hospital building 
or mm -hmm. a school building or a sensitivity of public assembly occupancy or a large span building or something of that nature where you can bring in some of these requirements to operate. That's so for please read where all it's applicable on the requirements of fire protection, either 15 meters and above or buildings above horizontal uh, area of more than 500 square meters and some sensitive occupancies to be decided by the authority having jurisdiction. We'll, you can you have to provide that. Uh, I thought people should understand that. It's not that uh, uh, anything below they can do whatever you like. No, not at all. You can have a single story hospital building or a double story hospital building. And in case you don't have the fire protection requirement in those buildings, and large number of deaths are happening in hospitals lately, you have seen. And most of the things are all just three story and four story hospitals coming over there. And there are people who can't move around. Even if a fire happens, nothing can happen. They are sick people. They are, they are in a coma. They are in an ICU. So you have to make this provision even in heights which are less than 15 meters. So therefore, please read the clause provisions in, in detail. Thank you. I think the, uh, the hospital above 10 bed, 10 bed uh, hospital, whether it is nursing home, uh, fire fighting and detection uh, must. So this is the that's what I'm trying to say. That that ten bed will equal to the area which I told, na. So that's yeah. why you said uh, horizontal area limit also, or building beyond that area. Either vertical control must, and in certain case, when you have some sensitive occupants, sensitive occupants according to me are school buildings, uh, young children, uh, as well as, and the second one is going to be hospitals and healthcare institutional building we call it over there. So Swarup uh, Nagar, uh, uh, sir Swarup. I'll take this. Swarup Nagar has, has many questions, but I will take the last question from Swarup Nagar. Uh, Martin versus uh, FAR. Will local building laws overrule NBC or vice versa? NBC is a guiding document. It's a recommendatory document. It is not a mandatory document. Statement number one. That means none of the provisions of the building code is mandatory to anybody. But what's happening is the, your direct question between the local rules and the NBC, the local rules will prevail because local rules is made under a, under an act, a municipal corporation act or a municipality act or a town town and country planning act, etc. etc. is a regulation. But what is happening is, as is with respect in respect of fire is concerned, all the things in addition to the municipal act, which is reading the building rules there, fire department fire safety act has come in all places there. And once they have decided that part four of fire protection apply, only one line is needed that's in the document that for fire protection, uh, like for example, we are working on large number of states, the building regulator. They'll write only one line. Structural design shall be in line with part six structural design. If you put that one line, all the 800 pages coming in the building code or for structural design will become mandatory. Similarly, when the one line on fire protection comes into the building regulation, then all the provisions of part four will become mandatory. That's exactly what's happening now. But in case such a provision is not done, for some reason, they are still retrograde. They are not caught up to the needs of modern needs there. And if some regulations are lower, uh, they are very restrictive, you can always make a case. But the answer is that the local one will prevail because that's the provision under the act. The, the other one is called the deemed to satisfy provision by making mention of the National Building Code part as part of the building regulation in a, either the fire clause or structural design clause or building service clause, lift installation clause, water, sanitation, etc., clause, etc., then the NBC will prevail because you have made a mandatory document, a recommendatory document will become mandatory the moment it's part of the building regulation referred to in so many words. But my own understanding is that increasingly as years go by, more and more provisions of these seminars that we are organizing like this particular thing, people are getting aware on that. And states are also making them as part of And they also make the rules uh, to be in line with the NBC. Sandosh, you want to add? So that is sufficient enough. Sir. Sir, okay. yes. Ask but, you can, but you can indicate what is Maharashtra's situation on the, how you have done it already. So Maharashtra Fire Act directly has got a provisions of whatever uh, for fire and life safety, National Building Code Part 4 uh, shall apply. So Stop. that is the provision in the majority of the development control rules and the, in the fire act also. So by that provision, we can mandate part three and part four provisions. 
Okay, so let's uh, let's our answer. Let's keep it uh, as crisp as possible because we have fifty six question more. So okay. Navin Kumar is asking, sir, how to define type of construction and fire rating requirement for building? So as already told, uh, I means as per the National Building Code Part Four, there is a Table One, and there is a separate annexure given for various types of uh, materials used in the building construction, which provides the fire resistance rating. so how much how many mm of the concrete or brick works or wood every material used in the building with proper tables are provided uh, at in the annexure of the national building code part 4 by using that much material you can achieve uh, that much fire resistance rating of the material so, so this, is, this is this is a combination of both uh, australian query performance requirement is so many hours fire resistance and prescriptive requirement is how much thickness of the slab and uh, all will provide that maybe uh, for many information may not know even the structural engineers they may this not my baby it's very much their baby it says that if you want a column or a beam to come in a in a, a, a type 4 construction the cover required for the reinforcement as we more so even a reinforced concrete code in part 6 structural design indicates depending on the fire resistance rating that you require 1 hour 2 hour 3 hour or 4 hour the column beam slab floor will a different cover coming on that so that the clarification also will be useful for you sir uh, uh, yes uh, uh, sir jwani is asking any specific insulation material that uh, should be used as per mbc is any mbc recommends any specific insulation material no no nbc doesn't specify any specific material it is the property of any material you can utilize but it should have that property uh, of fire resistance rating it should be tested by any international uh, test lab or indian state lab like cbri rurki or any other test lab only thing is here in addition to fire resistance rating because of the issues on uh, interior one the flame spreadability comes over there is it a combustible material or is it a one which will spread the particular thing you touch it here the whole thing spreads horizontally or vertically on the panel or whatever you got also the flame spreadability of classification a b c so that's also another requirement one is fire resistance rating the other one is the flame spreadability rating for interior material please read both of them uh, sir uh, uh, chandar sethi is asking i i still not able to understand this question but i'm sure you will understand IES NBC to be allowed in each state, or it also depends on requirement or exemption of state laws. So oh, it is not the exemption. Any Indian standard or National Building Code, uh, they are all recommendatory documents. So any state law, because buildings, it is a state subject or the urban local body subject in the various state. It is not a central subject. so these are the central guidelines issued by uh, ministry of consumer affairs and every state has to adopt it through either their any law or by the rules so by adopting it it can be uh, mandated by uh, any of the authority local authority or the state authority for implementation so that is and already because, and the building code says you can either adopt it or you can also adapt it adapt to such local variation as you may like to make it if for certain reason in a local situation i am ready to use the building code but i won't exactly use that while adapt to some modification as may be necessary which they will recognize and they will uh, they will also justify it can also be done so building code says that you can either adopt it or adapt to such local variation as may be necessary which will be documented for good reasons uh, this one is more of electrical but mr bawari prasad was here uh just locked out uh, otherwise he would love to answer this so ishwar ayer is asking our friend ishwar ayer is asking do two electrical feeds originating from the same substation with an ats automatic transfer switch meet the requirement of a second alternate source of power each has to be as as i understand each has got to be separately covered your standby generators you know the fire ubhar fire it came only because of that from the uh, generating set the fire uh, spilled on uh, to the floor and the whole building got fire you know that so therefore they they should give a separation between the alternate source of particular thing and the protection needs but uh, what we can do is 
note down his email id and his number i'm sure we can give a clarification from no, he is he is saying uh, power uh, source is from the same substation but they have a separate meter is that yeah. second alternate source power requires yeah, meets the requirement are you just now said are come on that's you are contradicting yourself you just now said same source of power now you are saying alternate source of power i gave the answer for alternate source of power alternate uh, source is what your own generators being uh, generating over there a 500 kv generator or a 1000 kv generator is different than the grid power that you are getting on that but all the same let me say i is uh, email id note kariye yeah, yeah, i have it. i will i will take we will give him a good clarificatory response to mr ayer don't worry uh i'll go for a sagar a uh, question sir are smoke detector required inside the flat residential building i have already clarified already clarified he is asking whether we need inside the bedroom living room or one yes. smoke yes, is yes. yes yes about about yes. 60 meter yes yeah in every room it is required yes yes, yes. For, for example sprinkler automatic sprinklers to be provided in residential building previously they used to put just at the entrance door one point be taking take it up to the corridor just put a nozzle at that that's not enough so that's why i'm telling the reach of each of the sprinkler becomes important so each of the space would require that particular thing if residential building beyond a certain height the answer comes to the other one capacity for the local fire brigade to come and fight the fire at that heights are not there so you got a inbuilt fire protection coming on that that's all covered in table 7 so you got to provide in all spaces sir is arminder singh is asking sir if any industry is opening on a highway close i don't know what is is the question is opening on the highway is it not a non compliance so for giving approval for to have the entrance from the highway you have to have the approval from the highway authority so depending upon the uh, highways uh, length and width they will take a call and it is their prerogative to allow such type of openings or not majority times they don't allow it is uh, shall be operated through the service uh, roads only so i will move but maybe industrial building uh, you might say so midc and other related road no, normally they don't directly open on the uh, highways we provide a service uh, roads along with the highway and from that uh, service road approach is provided to the industrial activities sir dilip shantapa is asking can you please clarify on azardus material storage inside any building and its binding factors no hazardous storage uh, means what type of material it is so there are authorities define uh, if it is a petroleum storage then it will attract the provisions of petroleum act then the if it is under pressure vessels then smpv rules are there to govern so uh, issue is in case of emergency local fire services local police and local district authority should know about the potential risk covered in that particular building so that they can have the on site and off site emergency related to uh, disaster management disaster management point of view so considering this aspect any hazardous activity Uh, the no objection certificate for storage or handling or to utilize these authorities uh, shall uh, have the information about that material so uh, considering that requirement uh, normally it is uh, means all uh, any authority which is approving it it will seek uh, clearances from the local authority building authority fire authority local police station and the district authority so this is the normal practice and then you have to segregate it and there are rules indian standards how to protect such type of things if it is falling under the uh, chief control of explosives they will provide you the all details regarding the storage uh, which place you have to store what ventilation you have to provide what containment you have to provide so all these uh, are provided in the approved drawing from their sides and part four uh, for information Uh, in addition to the general requirement coming on all fire protection for various types of building each of the occupancy wise for example uh, storage building hazardous building industrial building each one of those particular higher or uh, uh, the business building or which is office building etc etc they are given for each of them what are all the additional requirements from fire protection point of view to be taken care 
in addition to the statutory provisions which are available under various uh, acts which is mentioned by santor so the specific question that you asked over there if you kindly go into part 4 some of those particular clauses are already covered in detail in that so moving to uh, mr kiran dal question please describe on a h j structure in india for fire alarm and protection system a h j structure in india a h j structures means it is a authority having jurisdiction so every means <laughs> if you are talking about the state fire services uh then the regional officers or the district fire officers of uh, of that state will uh, handle this uh, related to fire approvals for granting provisional and final fire approval if you are talking about municipal structure then it is the municipal fire chief or the fire officer of that uh, local body will give you the provisional fire approval at the time of building plan approval and at the time of the oc before granting oc you sh should have the complete Uh, detection system or sprinkler system, whatever it required, depending upon the provisional NOC, and then uh, after carrying out inspection, he will give final fire NOC, and which will help you to get occupancy certificate. So that is the authorities are uh, defined with uh, every authority means municipal corporation is there, then the fire authority is different. Then if it is a state level fire services, then the regional or district fire uh, officers yeah. can handle that cases. I think uh, it will be good to note that all the state the fire services are not necessarily as a state departmental service. Many states are unlike that, but there are some good municipal corporations who are well uh, established over the years. The fire brigade and the fire staff are employees of the municipal corporation. Like for example. the mumbai municipal corporation has got their own fire services there even though maharashtra state fire service is there overall for others some of the corporations have their own uh, fire services on that so the operation will be done by the chief fire officer of the municipal corporation otherwise it will be done by the of the state fire chief fire officer or the director of fire service along with the hierarchy of people down below in up to various districts or cities uh, under the control they have under that sir uh, this question uh, fire response in many countries are indicated what uh, mr vijay bendi is uh, you know uh, mentioning that in most of the country fire response is 7 minutes so it is for clarifying it so lalit kumar deshmukh uh, is asking a question fire hazard mapping requirement is covered under nbc for different occupancy under fire zone to deal with fire emergencies answer is yes provided but whether those facilities are there the number of it all depend capacities capability of the fire brigade in number equipment machinery to handle all those particular thing we all want development all want higher fir higher fsi but do we have the commensurate capacity of the local fire brigade not only in terms of number and distance within the distance for you to come within 7 minutes he said they you heard uh, warik telling that and the standing fire advisory committee of the government of india under the ministry of home affairs have done a wonderful mapping that question of mapping comes over there for each of the cities and they have tried to identify what is the real requirement of the fire fire station and how much is actually provided in many cases or most of the cases the actual availability of these requirements of the fire brigade would be lesser than even 50% than what is actually required so therefore the answer comes in that particular one it is not a problem of mapping being done or not it's a matter of governments having the capacities to do that over a period of time you will find therefore you will have to also supplement that not only through the government funding or through the budget funding or also also through possibility the private sector developers who are coming with the development i want this large development the fire brigade can and if i am not mistaken i do remember maharashtra did that for an area which is far away in a new township development there is no fire facility for 10 15 kilometers away they put a place in your layout put a space for the fire they say put an amount of money required for fire station we won't give the approval for that varik sir you can open on that yeah yeah means in But maharashtra So we are running out of time. Uh, let's yeah, let me clarify uh, that. It's important, sir. Let me clarify. The private uh, townships uh, have come up, and in that they have provided the full-fledged fire station to protect their area, 
because they were beyond the municipal limit so no fire service was available in that area so we have insisted them and they have provided it and they they have gone for the height up to 100 meters also uh, in their uh, areas not only location building cost also and all the facilities also okay right. yes uh, uh, ranjit from kerala is asking are there any fire norms that connects coastal regulation zone It, it doesn't matter just because you see water available nearby only thing is additional source of water come on if the building is going to be tall like what you had in marader all the tall buildings the coastal zonal regulation will decide whether your particular building is within the crz limit or not coastal regulatory zone there is coastal regulatory zone management authority who is supposed to give a clearance on the height of the building with respect to the coastal zone with the high tide level and other related requirements under that the fire requirements will not undergo any change the fire requirements will be the same as applicable in the in inside river it depends upon the occupancy it depends on the height of the building and the degree of development the requirements of fire fight will not will not change because it comes under crz only thing crz your additional requirements from the point of view of the uh, flooding sea erosion storm surges flooding and other related thing which will cover the one that's what happened in kerala all those five maradu floods had to be brought down even though structurally it will stand for a long time fire it will stand for a long time they failed from the environment point of view because of crz next please sir we'll take only three question because we are almost now reaching 1 uh, 1:15 pm so there are another 45 question those who we, we are not able to answer you can email me i have given already my email id dominic at loanray.in you can send so we'll our speaker uh, will try to answer separately so i will pick only the next three questions uh, this question is from vinod kumar singh during fire emergency you should be close all doors to slow the spread of fire yes it is a protocol so it is expected that uh, fire should contain in the origin compartment itself and the uh, whatever detection and uh, separation systems made available in that particular compartment will come in action and it will contain that fire in that particular pocket so it is uh, expected that all doors along the travel line shall be closed so that the spread of fire can be limited so next question is rini was vanela is asking how the height of the building is calculated in industrial building up up to eaves and bridge no no the height is calculated in the same manner that is uh, highest livable area and uh, but there are some structures which are distillation columns in petrochemical industries which goes beyond 30 meters or 40 meters also so it is a process requirement it is not a human occupancy area no human uh, occupies that particular place for the working so as far as the these uh, restrictions are provided in national building code related to industrial building they are related to the working areas uh, of the person and not related to the activity of the industry industry may have the height beyond 15 meters but it should be ensure that no human occupancy shall work beyond that limited uh, uh, limitation so they should work below that and if they are uh, provided uh, sufficient fire protection systems we can uh, approve such kind of uh, activities sir uh, there is a, a recommendation from mr ashok mala from london london there, from london sir is there any government fire laboratory in india who can do assessment based on the assessment based fire certification of fire doors we have 650 plus certificates from globally credible labs however if we need to do repeat the same number of tests in india uh, it's wastage of time money and efforts so uh, is that yeah. is asking the answer is, is yes the answer is yes don't waste time the answer is yes if you okay. got any of those particular international laboratories uh, which are available underwriters laboratory or the building research station of uh, uk or various other international authorities where testing facilities are there fm various we'll be happy to take that india's facilities are comparatively lower other than 
large facility or central building research institute in Roorkee available. There are some additional testing facilities are being created over there, including uh, fire service college and various other places. So if it is available, we will definitely go by those particular international uh, certification available for any of the products or services or assembly which are already available. Sir, the question from Dr. Gopal Mishra. Yeah, go ahead. He's a, he's a Guruji. Yeah. Why should Guruji have a question? Yeah, Dr. Mishra is asking, who should regulate the matters connected with open spaces of the building authority? Uh, open spaces, the building authority or the fire authority? Uh, well, it's primarily it is a local body subject that open space is also being utilized by the fire. Open space is not being utilized, but the space around the building and the movement, the vehicular movement of the building around uh, under the spaces, the fire authority will have the control on that. But the other one, as you rightly say, is a use for the light, ventilation, and the other related requirements which you have on the environment related issue. And that particular thing is normally the controlling authority is a local body, controlling, I'm using. But otherwise, it belongs to the people and it belongs to the building owner, all the space around in the length, breadth, and height of the particular thing. The space which is required for the vehicular movement and other related one, as uh, uh, Santosh rightly clarified, even if you want podium, you require those facilities for that. There, the control aspects will come under the local body. Uh, Santosh, one more. Yeah, yeah, slide. correct. Yes, sir. Uh, I would also clarify, like, uh, it's National Building Code is not a mandate, it's a regulatory um, body, and it's, it's, yeah. a, it's a guideline. So a lot of people asking, is it, uh, you know, uh, a, a NBC need is a mandatory uh, to follow. So Amit Kakkar is our regular um, participant, also well-known uh, yeah, personality it. from Rajasthan, uh, Jaipur, is asking, is there any provision of providing services in setback spaces for installation of electrical substation, DG sets, transformer, ETP, STP, fire and domestic tank, etc. No. If, if that is a requirement for, yeah, go ahead, uh, Santosh, go ahead. No, no, means yeah, as per the local bylaws, there are some requirements. They allow the underground uh, water storage tanks and uh, sewerage plants in the marginal open spaces. But the electricity ones, it is it is a requirement as per the Electricity Act and rules. Uh, they required uh, from the external wall. But issue is you should have the clear circulation as far as fire safety is concerned from the building line to that particular service. So minimum six meters or nine meters, whatever the uh, clearance required for the circulation of fire vehicle, depending upon the height of the building, that should be um, clearly uh, means uh, provided and then you can have such type of activities some uh, means development control rules do provide uh, such kind of activity subject to limited uh, uh, in square meter area may be up to say 40 square meter maximum you can have the in the marginal open spaces or setback areas uh, that limitation is there but it should not obstruct the free mobility of fire that, appliances that is, that's the key that's the key the last point is the yes. key the movement of the vehicle should be unrestricted. Otherwise, you say I'm providing it, but I put this particular transformer on the particular thing or a generating set. You will, that is the Wait. source of fire. True. Sir, uh, you know, though I wanted to close this uh, because the, the very interesting questions from uh, uh, experts, I think they're also professionals in the industry. There are a lot of questions being asked. Uh, uh, Prasanna is clarifying that driveway in Telangana is nine meters. And Karnataka allows only uh, six and eight meters. So it's just a clarification to Super, our both, uh, have, both have to wake up. Both have to wake up. Both have to wake up. We can't do anything. What is required to be done, NBC provides. But if for some reason they decide to make the particular thing only eight meters in Karnataka, and they think people need not make the building safer in Karnataka, that is Karnataka's problem. People wake up at some point of time when a few more buildings catch fire. I mean, some accidents take place, then they know why it has happened, then they, they will note that the provisions are a little lower. Then the rules will also undergo change. This is a, this is a dynamic process uh, that's happening. NBC itself has gone from the 70 version to the 83 version, to the 2005 version, 2016 version. And you know, it's a, it's a process. The building rules not necessarily will catch up with the same amount of speed. Some of the states are very progressive. They catch it up very fast then and there. In fact, they are even a standing order where 
the, even though they make a provision of only the nine, 2005 version, as and when the latest version applies, the rule system will indicate that the latest NBC version will apply on that, even though it would have been formulated earlier. All that is required is, it's, these are all internal local decisions done. They should, they will have, should have their, their own justification possible. But when pressure comes from the builders, developers, architects, consultants, they bring this particular thing over there. States also over a period of undergo change. There are conferences where all the chief fire officers make, make NBC conference are there, where we talk and, uh, which, for example, Gopalji is uh, just now talked to us. Uh, there are such people of authority who has got knowledge level. Why, if you're able to explain why a provision is put the same way it is put over there, background behind that clause over there, then people understand that. It is not written uh, whim and fancy of some code writers over there. They are thought through the particular one in very minute detail, then changes are made accordingly on that. And comments do come, large number of comments do come. For example, 2016 version of the National Building Code, is, because it has become increasingly mandatory, every line is read by everybody. So we have a lot of comments coming. That particular panel dealing with that P2 panel, I'm a member also on that, Santosh is a member, Gopal is a member. So we go through those particular clause regularly to keep a track what amendments to be brought over there or changes to be brought over there. It may not be a whole revision of NBC, at least that part can have some amendment being brought over also. That is a limited answer I can give. Uh, so the question but, to you, sir, Mr. Suresh, please advise the uh, question from British Doshi. Please advise the applicability of the various construction categories such as type 1, type 2, type 3, and type 4. Where can I have type 1 construction and where type 2 and likewise? Already given part 4. Please read part 4. Already, Santoshi already clarified that. It's in the beginning all high-rise buildings and uh, potential risk buildings shall be uh, constructed out of type 1 or type 2 construction. Type 2. That means, okay. the fire rest, that means the fire rest is rating that's coming for the column, beam, slab, floor, everything. You can have a timber structure with only a one hour fire resistance over there. You require a uh, right type of fire resistance to come on this particular one. So, Ishwar Iyer is recommending you, sir, Suresh, sir, and uh, Santosh Wari. Fire department have rapidly expanded the use of drones as more communities have realized the life saving impact that aerial technology can be can yeah. have in response to structural fire. Will NBC yeah. address this in upcoming issues? You just yes, answer is yes. Loud Very yes. Good. That's a good news, good news, sir. Yeah. Now, NBC is applicable to uh, 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 NBC. Now, how is, how is NBC applicable to modification or expansion of existing building? Yeah, that's a very, very nice question. Uh, would you like so, to answer, or shall yeah. I finish off? Yeah, every law is prospective and it cannot be implemented retrospectively. So yeah. whatever the buildings are coming, uh, came up before the implementation of any act or any rule. So they are protected. So it is their right. So whatever means if uh, somebody is coming up in uh, means a maternity home or uh, uh, hospital in ground plus or one story building, in a residential complex, then you cannot have the two meter uh, width of the passages and the staircase. So it is a uh, main occupancy is residential one and the, below any commercial complex is there or ground plus one uh, activity is there. There they are having uh, this hospital uh, yeah. up to uh, 10, 12 beds. So yeah, you cannot change idea. any structural part, but at least minimum protection like manual call points, then detection systems, these additional layers you can provide, which will ensure that there will be proper alarm and detection in case of any emergency and the sprinklers or will get activated and you can have the proper compartmentation. So whatever the new features are there, that it is a applied science actually. So what is the potential risk and how you can safeguard that in case of modifications. Normally, these are the cases coming up in the existing building. You do modification. If you wanted to have the office building is there, you have you wanted to have a server room. So the server room will uh, build uh, uh, battery protection, then server rack protection, total flooding system is required, detection system required. So these are the additional layers. Uh, they are provided in the code. So you have to uh, apply those to that particular activity. 
I think is what I want to answer. Only one thing. Only one thing we can add is that is where important cross will come. If for uh, if for any reason, if the authority having jurisdiction, including the fire authority, that's uh, one having jurisdiction, determines that this particular building with the present particular way it is there, the age of the building. It can be structural. It can be due to bad maintenance of the building, or structural deficiency, or decay, obsolescence. Whatever be the reason which are there, if they uh, and it is also not safe structurally or from fire safety point of view. If the and occupancy of the people are dangerous over there, they can declare the building unsafe. So there is a clause in Part Two of the National Building Code of how do you do in existing buildings over there. The all provision cannot be applicable so therefore the authority can ask the owner or builder you want to do the particular thing yes do the structural fitting or retrofitting or various other things including additional facilities we added etc especially with a true taller building no second staircase is not there what are the ways by the second staircase can be added outside can you do it or whatever so there are various case case states have done that particular thing so the direct answer is existing building The new provisions will not apply. However, if existing buildings are shown to be an unsafe building due to various reasons, the authorities can ask certain amount of improvements or suggestions or retrofitting to be done to strengthen and make the building safer. But in any case, all these over a period of time, because land cost has become more, they won't have if it's a low story building, they then will come for a complete re demolition or reconstruction. Then the new uh, rules will come. Okay. Sir, you know the questions are growing. It seems that uh, uh, we need to have a separate uh, webinar to take only questions on NBC, you know, part four. Uh, it's growing. I think. Yeah. Okay, kind of take only us... question session. How can only questions? <laughs> you have a presentation done for so brilliantly. Uh, uh, Santosh has done. Or Gopal ji has done. Namaskar. Uh, you know, I was thinking that after two hours, people will drop. Nobody seems to be dropping out, so everybody is paying a lot of attention on this NBC yeah. subject. Very good. I think so are getting, uh, you know, they are the giving, they are giving responses. They are giving spontaneous responses without any doubt in our I mind. Think, okay. uh, I, I I will have uh, you know Gopal and you and uh, everybody on the panel and sure. uh, invite question you know one week before and show that it, because uh, it's not ending. You know, I thought I'll close. The question will reduce, but it is increasing, which means. People are quite keen, you know, to practice practicing life. Yeah, yeah. One But, uh, so let me tell you, we are given more than we start stopped at twelve fifteen. We have one hour and ten fifteen minutes. We have been giving responses. Nobody gives such opportunity for giving Q and A. I am also participating literally so many webinars over there. If you are able to cover more than three questions or four questions or five questions, but you must have covered at least around forty questions already so far. I did not yeah. know the number. I, I think this one last question, sir. Last question of the day. Uh, this is the question by building number twenty-two. <laughs> is is designated as well, building number twenty-two. It is a very interesting question. Can we extend balcony in four point five meters open space? So open space around building. No, it's also okay. even that's indicated. That also is indicated in part three. Up to what particular width you can have the balcony width coming over there uh, at higher heights. That's already indicated there. Limitations are there. You can't you can't take it across like a whole uh, cantilever slab to cover the whole vertical because that yeah. vertical space might be the one for you to do it. That question rightly asked by uh, who is the owner of the particular thing, the local body or the fire people. Answer will come there. So you can't open it in such a way that that space is not available for you to have your hoses to come or fighting the fire trajectory to come over there. Uh, Santosh, you want to add? Yes, yes, that, very true. Uh, you cannot have uh, balconies beyond certain line. Depending upon the building height, you should have that space from your plot boundary to the any of the projections. That should be minimum. 4.5 is clear uh, for the up to uh, 15 meters and beyond 15 meters 6 meters are required for carrying out external fire fighting and rescue operations so you Very cannot have uh, encroachment yeah. in that space part 3 part 3 already covers that i think uh, dominic i was just seeing the questions uh, very uh, keep on reading the chat and all that many people want our email id please share the email id of uh, yeah, sure sir i am sorry can we suresh please give it to them okay And when you when you YouTube YouTube when you're going to give the whole document today is coming or tomorrow you're going to do it? I'll be doing it on Monday, sir. Mm -hmm. Monday. Please yeah. indicate the email IDs also. I find about eight of them are asked. 
our contact. So, uh, one comment I I read uh, about both of you. One is saying, Mr. V. Suresh is a knowledge bomb on NBC. Okay, knowledge bomb on structural any chapter is a knowledge bomb. And Santosh Varik, he says, wonderful, the presentation to the point and very informative. It's, it's coming from very senior people from the fraternity. Not Indeed, from uh, let, let us thank, let us thank all the people. Very good. Because we have been working in the sector for the last 55 years, right from the first version down to this, we have gone into the minute detail. Therefore, we are able to clarify with confidence and clarity. That's the reason. And uh, Santosh ji has been there. If he has made a wonderful presentation, uh, like that, but not very, very rarely that I think to my knowledge, having been the sector, part three being covered by a chief fire officer has rarely happened, but uh, but uh, but he has done it, uh, it has happened today, and he has done it with amazing clarity and uh, uh, detail, and uh, covered it beautifully, and what, he has also linked that requirement with the part four requirement. And anybody who wants to implement part four should equally be aware of, uh, even for the fire authorities, people should know part three requirements. Uh, no, we will do, we'll do dedicated uh, NBC part four. In that, we'll take more questions than, you know, we'll have a very restricted uh, time on the uh, presentation. We will take uh, very soon, maybe in October mid, uh, we will invite uh, uh, the experts uh, again to, because uh, look like uh, NBC part four, not you know, in webinar, not in, covered in detail. So we'll open a session on NBC part four for all our uh, friends who are quite keen and they're still sticking on. We have 143 members. I would like to thank, thank Mr. Suresh wholeheartedly. Uh, you know, he, he, uh, there was miscommunication that, uh, you know, uh, he, he, I, I, we yeah, already- Please and thank you. Uh, anytime, you know, he, he's on board to us. And I'm sure October month we will meet again with all these uh, key speakers. And we look forward for your continuous participation in the knowledge series. This is the knowledge series, non-profit uh, seminars. There is no intention of any commercial uh, business in this uh, knowledge series that we're conducting. I thank all the participants for uh, coming forward and motivating me to conduct more and more. And I will continue this as long as I will have a stamina uh, to conduct this. So thank you very much. You have a wonderful day. Stay safe, stay home. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you once again. And we thank look you. forward to see you next week with Mr. Ashok Menon as a keynote speaker on uh, strategic ev evacuation. And the speaker is wonderful, young Roy S. Fernandez from Jensen is Dubai. I look forward for you to register and see you soon. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful day, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dominic. Thank you, Santoshji. Thank you, Dominic. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Great. We have 50 questions. So before we close, I think we test still 50 questions to be unanswered. So I will please, post you. Please, please, please share the questions now. You share yeah, the questions. I will, I will, I will share this question, sir. Most of them will be repeat. I think we have covered broadly all the uh, this thing on that. For example, somebody yes. has asked a question over there. Local fire brigade people are asking this particular equipment we bought or something like that. What the, the answer to that person should be that what they should do is not which company. They should be dealing with what should be the specification of what is the technology to be used over there. Smoke detector or heat detector or any detector or extinguisher. Then whomsoever are the manufacturers, they will take a call on that. So the answer should be that one or two people ask a question, I could find that. Okay, sir, I will uh, share your email in the question box also. You also and, you, uh, kindly, if you don't mind, we are answered about 40 or 50 questions. We know the answer on that. If some of them are also repeat, please don't send it. And if you already given an answer on that, uh, if there are new questions which are not covered over there, only those things you bring it out so that we have, we have also got very limited time. For example, today, now right from 11 o'clock to 1.30. Now, roughly, uh, we are getting into roughly two and a half hours. We have been on the uh, checking in another 15 minutes earlier. So, we should have a time to deal with that. I'm getting into another program at 2 o'clock. I was uh, coming a program uh, earlier from 10 to 10.30 of the CIA. You're aware of that. Okay? Thank yeah. you. You do a Thank little you, bit of clearance. Don't send all the questions straight away. You also do a little bit of screening. And then send it only what is relevant. You also, by the way, you know which is important. Okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you.
ओके थैंक यू डॉम थैंक यू सर या वेरी वेल थैंक यू